Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, Recognizing Skeletons. I read an interesting article the other day that suggested we, as people, recognize things, identify things by their inner structure, their skeletons. And these skeletons are more than just a face. And we don't recognize things really merely by face or color or sound or even the context of time and place. We look for the skeleton. We know a tree is different from a dog because of the skeleton, the structure, the bones. The bones of the building and the bones of the dog are different. And children, young children, learn to adapt and relate to the world based on these hard structure identifiers. And we, science, we don't yet understand why the human brain is wired to be able to recognize something by its shape and not, say, by its sound. But I wonder if it has to do something with threat survival. The outline of a church on a horizon, its steeple, is less threatening than the outline of an approaching armored tank. One spire holds a cross. The other spire spits fire and delivers a devastating blow to both body and home. The outline of a cat on a neighborhood street is generally more welcoming than, say, the outline of a bear you see hiding in the woods. Animals and birds, the hunter types, also know the difference, skeletally, between foes, friends, and dinner. A red-tailed hawk recognizes the difference between a bunny and a dog. One is dinner, the other probably trouble. And here's one example, a personal example. Our cat, Jack. You can read about him in my article, Death of a Writing Partner, in bowlsblogs.com. Well, Jack was never upset about anything ever, really. Jack was totally and completely chill. Loud noises did not bother him. Strangers did not bother him. You could vacuum right up to his feet. And he'd just look at you oddly and wonder what you were doing, and he would not move. You could not shake Jack the cat. However, when one day during Halloween, my wife, Jana, placed cat ears on her head. It was a simple hairband with two triangles for ears on top of the band. And while Jack didn't run or freak out, he loved Jana very much, his stance clearly changed when she put on the cat ears. And he changed, we guess, because the outline, the silhouette skeleton of my wife's head, had changed from human to cat. And so Jack the cat crouched a bit, moved his head to look at her one way, then the other, again and again from new and different angles. And when Jana removed the cat ears, because she could see he was getting a little upset, Jack immediately went right back to his normal nonchalant stance. Oh, it's you, it's Jana. Okay, never mind. However, to continue the test... She put the ears right back on, and Jack again changed, went right into his new suspicion mode and kept his eye on her. Ears off, Jack's fine. Ears right back on, he's in a defensive, wary stance. And in this scientific study, it even worked with me. And Jack never gave me the time of day, because he loved Jana very deeply, and he tolerated me but only in her absence. So, Jack knew me without the ears, ignored me. I put on the cat ears, and suddenly, I was interesting. 
He looked at me. I guess because I became a stranger. And I liked wearing those cat ears around Jack because suddenly Jack cared about me. Well, maybe not cared, but at least he was paying attention to me. So we, as these strange humans, immediately can recognize a car from a bus, from a motorcycle, from a bicycle, based on the skeleton structure of what we know and what we are seeing. Sure, there's still some primordial danger there in these transportation vehicles, but probably not as much danger as those skeleton structures that are a direct threat to life. And in this application of the skeleton danger ideal that I am proposing to you today, a pillow is not a couch, a chair is not a rug, and we know that identification by separating and grading the skeleton works. It happens normally, all day, transversely and transparently. We transfer the idea of the danger skeleton and apply it to the ordinary object in order to understand, order, and label our world, threatening, non-threatening. And we also recognize words by their skeleton structure. We learn to read and become literate because of the shape of the words, not the words themselves. And a lot of children are taught to sound out a word, but what they're really doing is not just sounding out a word, they are memorizing the shape of the word on the page. And that is why it's hard for people to read all caps when you type all caps in email. And it's hard to read because all the words run together as giant chunks of unreadable text. And whether you realize it or not, your eye has to slow down to decode each word by looking at each individual letter to help you form the concept of the entire word. So, all caps have no upper and lower letters to help you recognize the word based on its shape to the eye. Mixed case printing exists for a reason. Readability and comprehension. And all readers need that identifiable distinction between words by visually identifying their structure, their unique word skeleton. For instance, puppy, P-U-P-P-Y, in all caps, is one big blob of a word. But puppy, all in lowercase print, has four visual identifiers that drop below the median line. You have three P's and one Y. The leftover U is the standard weighted character that gives the other letters full of definition by association and grouping. And to take this to the next level, in American Sign Language, when you fingerspell the word puppy, you downward emphasize the three P letters and the Y as your fingerspell. So you are creating a visual, bouncing, unique image of the word you are fingerspelling. And so puppy, P-U-P-P-Y, becomes visually distinct from the word dog, D-O-G, or cat, C-A-T, or kitten, K-I-T-T-E-N. And so, my human meme friend, we know by seeing and we learn by visualizing and then making logical jumps into something being something we have previously recognized. And that is how scammers and con artists find us and exploit us. They use a familiar skeleton we trust, and then they twist it to take advantage of you. Just like the gift of the Trojan horse. What you see may not be what you know. And that is the real danger in recognizing a skeleton structure. 
You may recognize it, but you may not know what really hides within. And with that said, we cannot help but wonder how those born blind at birth find their way safely in the world. Safely without the benefit of a recognizable skeleton structure to help form their comprehension. Is their danger skeleton structure more audible than visual? And if there is a correlation, what makes one sound more dangerous than another? Other than, of course, sirens and alarms and other intingers of danger. A barking dog must be more dangerous to the blind than, say, a purring cat, right? Well, one wonders without knowing. And that, my human meme friend, is what leads us into the wonderment of this human life. We need to know. But we can only know what belongs to us or what is given to us or what is taught to us. There is no skeletal dictionary available to us for discovery. Only real-life study will truly lead us into the danger of understanding. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.